Only three attendees are there. Oh no, okay, Tamar, 130 years, 130 countries. In what I may log in, you know, other may ICC Facebook, okay, you know, other make a signature, okay, huh? Facebook, 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 huh? to conclude a series of agreements, including an agreement on trade facilitation. These are the first multilateral trade agreements to have been reached by the World Trade Organization since its creation in 1995. The areas that we specialize in are uh, trade finance fraud, shipping fraud, including maritime privacy, um, the uh, collection of information on intellectual property crimes, and anti-money laundering uh, and uh, compliance issues for banks. For example, in maritime piracy, 
we set up the piracy reporting center, which is still the only center capable of receiving reports directly from ships when they are attacked wherever they are in the world. Uh, we compile these reports, we, it becomes a, a basis for law enforcement agencies to uh, respond to these attacks. Our global network includes over six and a half million companies, chambers, and associations in over 130 countries throughout the world. If by 2030, the developed countries are gonna represent about 30% of world GDP, that means 70% of world GDP is coming from outside the developed country. So with that kind of an opportunity, the International Chamber of Commerce is that global business platform that you have to be a part of if you're going to be able to achieve that kind of growth. National Chamber of Commerce, Sri Lanka, is the national office of the Paris-based business organization. The ICC comprises a membership of 45 million members in 130 countries. Trade facilitation, export and import and cross-border trade and issues relating to freight forwarding and many other matters of importance are addressed by the ICC. ICC Sri Lanka works through several committees to debate, discuss, and suggest solutions on subjects related to the mandate of the Chamber. Each of these commissions are led by professionals in the committee, with many committees functioning. ICC includes a membership committee, international relations committee, policy and advocacy committee, training and development committee, banking committee. ICC is the sole authorized guaranteeing agency for a tiered garnets and internationally accepted customs document which enables duty free and tax free temporary importation of items as commercial samples. The tiered garnets reduces costs and red tape. The ICC is also known for its popular publications invaluable for bankers, lawyers, arbitrators and anyone involved in cross-border trade. Its members are provided with a member's privilege card, which includes discounts with multiple retailers. RCC Sri Lanka's vision is to be the organization of choice to advance international trade and investment for businesses in Sri Lanka. RCC Sri Lanka's mission is to be the change agent in national policy formulation and implementation and facilitator of global businesses with Sri Lanka and disseminator of information on the development of business utilizing the services of ICC Paris while continuing to be a facilitator of dispute resolution. In addition, the ICC Sri Lanka organizes seminars, lectures, meetings with business leaders, and gives recognition to Sri Lankan businesses for outstanding achievements. ICC can play a special role in connecting business to the world and be a driving force for all Sri Lankan businesses. The International Chamber of Commerce was founded in Paris in 1919. In the aftermath of the chaos and destruction of the First World War, the founding fathers of the International Chamber of Commerce had it in mind to create an organization that would produce an economic environment that was conducive to economic growth, to the creation of jobs, and of course the world has changed in that period of time. In the 21st century, we have a number of emerging markets which didn't exist when the founding fathers founded the organization. The member companies uh, have gone up uh, significantly because people need to be a part of it, such as where they can grow and learn. Today, it's coming from all over the world, whether it's Asia Pacific, whether it's Eastern Europe, 
whether it's uh, parts of Africa, South America. And so as we start to see that kind of expansion, the relevance of the International Chamber of Commerce goes way up because people are going to have to learn how to adapt to those markets. The International Chamber of Commerce is, is involved in a number of significant areas of operation throughout the world on behalf of world business. Dispute resolution services, policy advocacy, codes and rules, commercial crime services, services for chambers of commerce, and training and conferences. The International Court of Arbitration is the, is the largest court of arbitration in the world. They offer mediation and arbitration services to companies and uh, are focused on dispute resolution services. I'm particularly proud of being uh, an institution, an official institution which administers scales really literally in all parts of the world. This is something that no other uh, institution uh, can, uh, can, can, can feature. And uh, we had last year uh, cases uh, from involving parties from more than 130 different countries. We are present in a number of international fora advocating on behalf of the world business. Organizations such as the World Trade Organization in the B20, G20 process of the United Nations. The future of ICC is to continue to produce high quality and impactful policy work so that business worldwide can communicate effectively its uh, priorities to government and that it can have a body that can develop rules to help it uh, trade and invest internationally. Probably the most recent and the most uh, significant achievement that we can uh, be proud of is the agreement that was reached by the World Trade Organization to conclude a series of agreements, including an agreement on trade facilitation. These are the first multilateral trade agreements to have been reached by the World Trade Organization since its creation in 1995. The areas that we specialize in of uh, trade finance frauds, shipping frauds, including maritime piracy, uh, the uh, collection of information on intellectual property crimes and anti-money laundering uh, and uh, compliance issues for banks. For example, in maritime piracy, we set up the Piracy Reporting Center, which is still the only center capable of receiving reports directly from ships when they are attacked wherever they are in the world. Uh, we compile these reports, we, it becomes a, a basis for law enforcement agencies to uh, respond to these attacks. Our global network includes over six and a half million companies, chambers, and associations in over 130 countries throughout the world. If by 2030, the developed countries are going to represent about 30% of world GDP, that means 70% of world GDP is coming from outside the developed country. So with that kind of an opportunity, the International Chamber of Commerce is that global business platform that you have to be a part of if you're going to be able to achieve that kind of growth. The International Chamber of Commerce, Sri Lanka, is the national office of the Paris-based business organization. The ICC comprises of membership of 45 million members in 130 countries. Trade facilitation, export and import and cross-border trade, and issues relating to freight forwarding and many other matters of importance are addressed by the ICC. RCC Sri Lanka works through several committees to debate, discuss, and suggest solutions on subjects related to the mandate of the Chamber. Each of these commissions are led by professionals in the committee, with many committees functioning. RCC includes a membership committee. 
International Relations Committee, Policy and Advocacy Committee, Training and Development Committee, Banking Committee. RCC is the sole authorized guaranteeing agency for a tier card. It's an internationally accepted customs document which enables duty-free and tax-free temporary importation of items as commercial samples. The Atiya Khan introduces costs and red tape. The RCC is also known for its popular publications invaluable for bankers, lawyers, arbitrators and anyone involved in cross-border trade. Its members are provided with a member's privilege card which includes discounts with multiple retailers. RCC Sri Lanka's vision is to be the organization of choice to advance international trade and investment for businesses in Sri Lanka. RCC Sri Lanka's mission is to be the change agent in national policy formulation and implementation and facilitator of global businesses with Sri Lanka and disseminator of information on the development of business utilizing the services of ICC Paris while continuing to be a facilitator of dispute resolution. In addition, the ICC Sri Lanka organizes seminars, lectures, meetings with business leaders that gives recognition to Sri Lankan businesses for outstanding achievements. ICC can play a special role in connecting business to the world and be a driving force for all Sri Lankan businesses. Already taken eight people have died. Huh. Ali. The International Chamber of Commerce was founded in Paris in 1919. In the aftermath of the chaos and destruction of the First World War, the founding fathers of the International Chamber of Commerce had it in mind to create an organization that would produce an economic environment that was conducive to economic growth, to the creation of jobs, and of course the world has changed in that period of time. In the 21st century, we have a number of emerging markets which didn't exist when the founding fathers founded the organization. The member companies uh, have gone up uh, significantly because people need to be a part of it, such as where they can grow and learn. Today, it's coming from all over the world, whether it's Asia Pacific, whether it's Eastern Europe, whether it's uh, parts of Africa, South America. And so as we start to see that kind of expansion, the relevance of the International Chamber of Commerce goes way up because people are going to have to learn how to adapt to those markets. The International Chamber of Commerce is involved in a number of significant areas of operation throughout the world on behalf of world business. Dispute resolution services, policy advocacy, codes and rules, commercial crime services, services for chambers of commerce, and training and conferences. The International Court of Arbitration is the, is the largest court of arbitration in the world. They offer mediation and arbitration services to companies and uh, are focused on dispute resolution services. I'm particularly proud of being uh, an institution, an official institution which administers cases really literally in all parts of the world. This is something that no other uh, institution uh, can, uh, can, can, can feature. And uh, we had last year uh, cases uh, from involving parties from more than 130 different countries. We are present in a number of international fora advocating on behalf of world business, organizations such as the World Trade Organization, in the G20, G20 process, of the United Nations. The future of ICC is to continue to produce high quality and impactful policy work so that business worldwide can communicate effectively its uh, priorities to governments and that it can have a body that can develop rules to help it trade and invest internationally. Probably the most recent and the most uh, significant achievement that we can uh, is the agreement that was reached by the World Trade Organization to conclude a series of agreements, including an agreement on trade facilitation. These are the first multilateral trade agreements to have been reached by the World Trade Organization since its creation in 1995. The areas that we specialize in are uh, trade finance frauds, shipping frauds, including maritime privacy, uh, the 
collection of intellectual property crimes and anti money laundering and compliance issues for banks. Set up the piracy reporting center, which is still a center capable of receiving reports directly from ships when they are attacked wherever they are in the world. Uh, we compile these reports, we, it becomes a, a basis for law enforcement agencies to uh, respond to these attacks. Our global network includes over six and a half million companies, chambers, and associations in over 130 countries throughout the world. If by 2030, the developed countries are going to represent about 30% of world GDP, that means 70% of world GDP is coming from outside the developed country. So with that kind of an opportunity, the International Chamber of Commerce is that global business platform that you have to be part of if you're going to be able to achieve that kind of growth. The International Chamber of Commerce, Sri Lanka, is the national office of the Paris-based business organization. The ICC comprises of membership of 45 million members in 130 countries. Trade facilitation, export and import and cross-border trade, and issues relating to freight forwarding and many other matters of importance are addressed by the ICC. RCC Sri Lanka works through several committees to debate, discuss, and suggest solutions on subjects related to the mandate of the Chamber. Each of these commissions are led by professionals in the committee, with many committees functioning. RCC includes a membership committee, International Relations Committee, Policy and Advocacy Committee, Training and Development Committee, Banking Committee. RCC is the sole authorized guaranteeing agency for a peer garnets an internationally accepted customs document which enables duty free and tax free temporary importation of items as commercial samples. The peer garnet reduces costs and red tape. The RCC is also known for its popular publications invaluable for bankers, lawyers, arbitrators and anyone involved in cross border trade. Its members are provided with a member's privilege card which includes discounts with multiple retailers. RCC Sri Lanka's vision is to be the organization of choice to advance international trade and investment for businesses in Sri Lanka. RCC Sri Lanka's mission is to be the change agent in national policy formulation and implementation and facilitator of global businesses with Sri Lanka and disseminator of information on the development of business utilizing the services of ICC Paris while continuing to be a facilitator of dispute resolution. In addition, the ICC Sri Lanka organizes seminars, lectures, meetings with business leaders, and gives recognition to Sri Lankan businesses for outstanding achievements. ICC can play a special role in connecting business to the world and be a driving force for all Sri Lankan businesses. The International Chamber of Commerce was founded in Paris in 1919. In the aftermath of the chaos and destruction of the First World War, the founding fathers of the International Chamber of Commerce had it in mind to create an organization that would produce an economic environment that was conducive to economic growth, to the creation of jobs, and of course the world has changed in that period of time. In the 21st century, we have a number of emerging markets which didn't exist when the founding fathers founded the organization. 
the member companies uh, have gone up uh, significantly because people need to be a part of it, such as where they can grow and learn. Today, it's coming from all over the world, whether it's Asia Pacific, whether it's Eastern Europe, whether it's uh, parts of Africa, South America. And so as we start to see that kind of expansion, the relevance of the International Chamber of Commerce goes way up because people are going to have to learn how to adapt to those markets. The International Chamber of Commerce is, is involved in a number of significant areas of operation throughout the world on behalf of world business. Dispute resolution services, policy advocacy, codes and rules, commercial crime services, services for chambers of commerce, and training and conferences. The International Court of Arbitration is the, is the largest court of arbitration in the world. They offer mediation and arbitration services to companies and uh, are focused on dispute resolution services. I'm particularly proud of being uh, an institution, an official institution. Common, can you see me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Which are in all parts of the world. Am I loud and clear? Other yes, yes. Uh, can, uh, can, can. Yeah, we can hear you, General. German, am I loud and clear? Yes, yes. Just a minute, just a minute. Can you hear us? Wait. Yes, General, we can hear you. Okay, wait. No, I'm not seeing. No, I want to. I want to increase it now. No, we can hear you. We can hear you loud and clear. Voting center, which is still the only center capable of receiving reports directly from ships when they are attacked wherever they are in the world. Uh, we compile these reports, we, it becomes a a basis for law enforcement agencies to uh, respond to these attacks. Okay. Oh, oh. I I can see you. Our global network includes over six and a half million companies, chambers, and associations in over 130 countries throughout the world. If by 2030, the developed countries are gonna represent about 30% of world GDP, that means 70% of world GDP is coming from outside the developed country. So with that kind of an opportunity, the International Chamber of Commerce is that global business platform that you have to be a part of if you're going to be able to achieve that kind of growth. Can you hear us? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sudhat Silla. Can... Yes, I can hear you very clearly. Okay. Uh, Channa, thank you very much. Uh, okay, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you very well. Thank you. I think everybody is here. Uh, uh, Mr. Pragnaratna is not available, no? 
He he has already joined, no. but then yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. The... I can hear you. I'm there. Ah, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. You have switched off your uh, this thing, no? Ah, yeah. Thank you very much. Two more minutes to go. We will start in within two minutes. I think everybody got the agenda, right? Yes, we did. Attendees are joining now, one by one. Yeah, Randit, you can hear, Randit? Yeah, yeah, I can hear loud right. and clear. Right, okay. I think I sound tested everybody is online. No problem. One more minute to go, huh? Right. Good evening. Uh, good evening and uh, welcome to the first uh, webinar for this year conducted by the ICE, ICC Sri Lanka. Uh, in fact, um, during the month of December, the end of December, Major General Ravi Priya made a request when we met at a uh, ICC function that we could host this uh, digital signature and it was uh, uh, excellent request and we were able to put this uh, webinar together with a distinguished uh, panel and distinguished speakers. So uh, we have uh, played our video, ICC video, so I don't have to talk too much about ICC. ICC is in over, uh, close to over 90 countries with 45 million members around the world. We also issue the country of origin certificates the ATA CARNA certificate and uh, the INCO terms were developed by ICC and ICC Paris is over 100 years old and ICC Sri Lanka is over 65 years old. So uh, let me first introduce you to our distinguished panel and first let me introduce Major General G.V. Ravi Priya. Major General Ravi Priya as a schoolboy, received his preliminary education in Kerry College from 1972-75 and got admitted to Thurston College in 1976 and studied there till advanced level and appeared uh, A-level examination on the stream of bioscience in 1983. Major General G.V. Ravi Priya was enlisted in the regular forces of the Sri Lankan Army on the 8th of August, 1985, as an officer cadet and underwent training in Sri Lanka Military Academy, Deathalava. After his training period, he became the top of his batch and was awarded the Sword of Honor, which is the highest honor that an officer cadet can get at the successful completion of the training. He got the opportunity to join Regiment of the Sri Lankan Artillery after passing out from the military academy. He has held various appointments and followed local and foreign military courses during his career of 35 years plus. He commanded an offensive brigade at the inception of the one humanitarian operation and contributed to the final battle, commanding task force and eight troops of which found the body of the leader of the LTTE. After the humanitarian operations, he was appointed as a defense attache in Sri Lankan embassy in Washington, DC, USA. 
in appreciation of his noble services to his motherland. After returning to Sri Lanka, he held appointments in various directorates, such as the director, plans, media, personal administration, and director training in the army headquarters. He also was the commander president guard from 2013 to 2015. He was holding the appointment of commander security forces Kilinechi by the time he went on retirement on 13 January, 2020. He was awarded with two gallantry awards, Veera Vikrama, Vibhushanaya and Ratna Vikrama Padakkama for his bravery displayed during one humanitarian operations. He's married, blessed a daughter and son who are married and live abroad. It's an honor to have Major General Ravi Priya, Director General of Customs, uh, to give our keynote speech. Uh, over to you, sir. Good afternoon. Uh... Uh, let me first of all uh, extend my sincere thanks to you, Mr. Shanil. Indeed, I never expected your lengthy introduction. Um, however, uh, let me again uh, extend my sincere thanks. Uh, Chairman Shanil Fernando uh, uh, from IRCC and my friend Mr. Chana De Silva from Lanka Clear, for peace there, and my two brother officers, Sudanta Silva and Tilak Panyaratna and trade community, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon again. Uh, indeed, I never expected Shanil to arrange this uh, webinar this fast. Uh, we introduced uh, digital signature about six months back to my mind, or more than that, I suppose, and expected uh, traders and other communities to embrace it as soon as possible. But it did not happen so. That is a normal tendency of the human being. When you introduce new system, you have kind of reluctancy and hesitation to embrace it at once. So that's happened to this digital signature too. In addition to that, you also find little doubts. You have little doubts in your mind whether to use this and after using this, whether this would be accepted, etc. So this would be the same in the minds of the people who were asked to use this. In addition to that, I also came across some of the practical issues. Even though you are told to use the digital signature, you know, unless you are clear about that, unless you are clear from where this has to be taken and how to use, etc., you will not be able to use it. So therefore, I told my officers to make it very clear and very simple today and using even our mother tongue to explain it as to how it should be done. So I think the practical part is most important. I also would like to make the same request from Channa. Um, uh, you should just uh, inform them as to how this should be procured and then the maintenance about that. And also why only your company is uh, handling this because that is also a doubt which is there in the minds of the community. So uh, I would uh, request you all to clear it. So coming to the uh, uh, speech proper, uh, let's first of all see what is signature. And why are we using a signature? Now, use of signature has a very big history. Now, as per the uh, available documents, available literature, it uh, runs back to, uh, I think, first, second BC. But to my mind, even the primitive societies after Homo sapiens sapiens have had been using the signature for certain things in various other ways. But it's not the signature that we were using manually. A signature is a representation of someone's name indeed. So primitive societies wouldn't have had that. But however, they also used it for their identification. So the signature is used with the intent to agree to and acknowledge the terms of a document. And it's also used to verify and confirm the identity of a person. So uh, where did signature come from? It's not available in any of the document. And who was the first person to use the signature also? I tried my level best to find out, but I couldn't do that. Now, when it comes to manual signature, it further gives an authenticity to the document where the signature is placed. 
Indeed, the authenticity is uh, given even from the digital signature. For years and years, the practice was to submit documents signed manually. As all of us are aware, this practice has been immense problems to each and individual, be it sender or the receiver of that particular document, because it consumes a lot of time and can forge. Manual signature can be forged very easily. Adapting electronic signature is the way of the future. E-signatures are safer, faster, and more cost efficient. If you look at the electronic versus paper, you will see the advantages. Like this electronic. If you are going to use electronic signature, it will be faster and harder to forge and provide audit trails and it's paperless and eco-friendly and it saves time and money easily accessible from anywhere and virtual storage and archiving. So you see the electronic has got a lot of advantages and look, let's look at the paper. It's slow signing process. You have to take time, easily forged or tampered and not secured and waste of papers. You have to use a lot of papers for this. Paper records are expensive. Need a printer and a scanner and I need a filling cabinet to filing system to storage them. So you see the advantages of using electronic signature. So you see a lot of advantages, but the challenge is to get the people to embrace new system, as I mentioned at the inception. How are you going to get the digital document signed digitally? That will be explained to you by Channa and my brother officers. Now, people will have to determine and think in terms of new world with new technology. Are we going to remain as same as we were and as we are? Or now children today are more advanced than traditional old people. They're technologically advanced and think differently. So in an environment, where the children or where the young generation are educated and technologically advanced, definitely they will embrace this faster than the people in other generation. When we introduce this system to government departments and institutions, it will be helpful for you, for you since your work will be easier and less time may be required comparatively. So ladies and gentlemen, Today, you are gathered here to see the importance of this and how to use this and how to get this done and the importance of this. I'm very much sure that everyone is aware of the importance of the use of digital signature. But the thing is, they're on the fence when to use, whether this will create any issue, etc. So we are here to make you aware as to how this should be used and this and the necessity of this. And ladies and gentlemen, I indeed uh, extend my sincere thank to all of you all, including uh, Shanil Fernando, who came forward on my request to organize this fine platform to inform and to educate uh, the all the people irrespective of their rank and file, how to use this and how to embrace this. Having said that, and extended my sincere thank to every one of you who are present today amidst your busy schedule, let me take this opportunity to wish you all the very best in coming years. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Major General Ravi Priya, Director General of Customs. In fact, I can remember uh, I came leading the ICC Banking Committee to meet you about two years just before the COVID started. And immediately you accommodated, you appointed committees, and you said, let's get this done. And thank you very much for getting things done in the customs and uh, facilitating the trade uh, to move forward 
And I know because of uh, leaders like you and the BUI and the customs team, they work during the COVID, which helped us to work, the freight forwarders and all the other supply chain companies to work right throughout 24 hours. Thank you very much. So let me first uh, next uh, introduce Mr. Sudhata Silva. Mr. Sudhata Silva received his education at Asoka Vidhar Anand College, Colombo. For complete education, he entered Sri Lanka Law College, enrolled as attorney at law and of the Supreme Court of Columbia Management, EIM, of the University of Uh, sorry for that interruption. I was told that uh, that computer, there was some internet issue. Uh, so I switched the tables to proceed with it. Let me introduce uh, Mr. The, uh, give the profile of Mr. Sudhata Silva, Deputy Director of Customs Legal. Uh, Mr. Silva is an attorney at law of the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka. He received his MBA in Customs and International Trade from the Postgraduate Institute of Management. PIM of the University of Sri Javadanapura. Mr. Sudhasila joined the Sri Lankan Customs as an Assistant Superintendent on the 1st of June 1988. Presently, he serves as the Director, Deputy Director of Legal Affairs, Director of the Sri Lankan Customs. During his outstanding career of 33 years in the Customs, he has acquired vast experience in Customs, Border Management, Functions, and specialized in Trade Facilitation and Custom Automation. Mr. Sudhasa Silva is a member of the National Advisory Committee on the Logistics Sector and the National Advisory Committee on Trade Information established to implement the National Export Strategy by the Export Development Board. He is also a member of the Customs Working Group to implement the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement of the Sri Lankan Customs and a member of the Customs Coordinating Board, the Management Committee to implement the National Coordinated Border Management Policy at Sri Lanka Customs. He is also a member of the several committees established for customs reforms and modernization. Mr. Sudhata Silva is a member of the Legal and Technical Working Group of the Interim Intergovernmental Steering Group on Cross-Border Paperless Trade Facilitation initiated by the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia-Pacific called UNSCAM and chair the fifth legal and technical working group meeting with the UN regional head office in Bangkok, Thailand. He represented Sri Lanka at the working group to develop the framework of standard on standards on cross-border e-commerce by World Customs Organization. He also represented Sri Lanka at the Information Management Subcommittee of the World Customs Organization. Mr. Sudhartha Silva is a visiting lecturer of several reputed universities in customs border management. And he has been a trainer for over 20 years at Sri Lanka Customs Training Center. He's the charter president of the Sri Lanka Customs Toastmasters Club and the vice president of the Customs Staff Officers Union. Since April 2021, he also functioned as the 
official media spokesman of the Sri Lanka Customs. Over to you, Mr. Sudhada Silva, Deputy Director of Customs Legal, to explain to you on the digital signatures. Thank you very much, moderator. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me run my presentation in order to give you some knowledge with regard to the customs automation. I have titled my presentation as Automated Import and Export Procedure. Let me first explain you what customs does when imports and exports are happening. We all know that customs is a border management agency. Customs is a kiyanne, border ke indang rajakari karana, Lanka water bahanda atulu in a kota, even at the nana in a karana kota, even at the Lanka wing bahanda apane in a karana kota, a border ke di, may bahanda pilibanda katu to karna itanitamai, customs a kiyan. May bahanda api ekatekino nishkash in a karna. We call it customs clearance of the imports and exports. Make customs clearance process a gay customs a moka the Karani Kinaka and Mulimang Ogulan to Kian. There are two steps. Make a kotas decorate when name Sarlava Kinon Mulim import take a curry, export take a curry when we lament. A import ticket a how export ticket a summon the documents customs ticket are again in the customs ticket dripatter. In a may custom secretary documents Idripat Kirwama A Idripat Kirpu documents check Karanikatama customs office again, Palavinima Kajakari. So the first step in import export clearance is to check the documents submitted in relation to that particular import or export. So it is, we call it document check. There are dedicated document checking. Of uh, centers in customs, may document check karanna. Whenama ati karapu sthana thino gananava customs ek. Eking pradhan sthani ogolo halati long groom kela thino. Kalamu port ek te na sieluma imports saha kalamu port ek harha yana sieluma exports bola tadar documents processing ek venne customs headquarters kela thino long groom ek imports kela ta. Export so letter export uh, division. Okay. So first step is document check. Once the document check is completed and if the customs officer is satisfied with the documents, then he will decide whether the cargo should be examined physically. Then may documents take again as a hemicapasi customs officer theory gana may documents at Adala import take a hurry, export take a hurry, ekit in a body check or not, the Bahana check or not. If you want to check the theory, you can check the step of the theory. Cargo examination. So the officers at the cargo examination centers, they check the goods in the shipment against the customs, against the document. If the document is not available, it is not available. If the shipment is not available, it is not available. You know, so there are two processes, document check and cargo examination. If you have to do automation, you have to do process to automate it. Balu Belmet Hari Saralai, you have to do a hit and a run. You have to do a hit and a run. You have to do a hit and a run. This is the first reason why it is not so simple, the automation. But there are so many documents. You can see in this slide, on the left-hand side, the documents required for import. On the right-hand side, the documents required for export. You can see a long list of documents for imports, up to 15 documents. There may be more, which I may, I may have missed. Look at Palavini, customs declaration. The maker, Hadani customs house agent, you know, Wolf Clark, 
So you need the support of a war of cloud. Then he has to prepare another document called value declaration. Then these two documents must be supported with the delivery order. Then may documents are customs declaration, value declaration, war of cloud. How do you know? Have I a document attached to the document? Delivery order, commercial invoice, bill of lading, long list. Exports are at the starts with the customs declaration, boat note, and the cargo dispatch note. So, may documents to the war of cloud. Attach current in invoice, packing list, license, product literature. The may list the key, Palihamatino, Tama important pickup. Import salt fifteen number fifteen balana, order regulatory approvals. Export salt number eight balana, border regulatory approvals. Border regulatory approvals are required for both imports and exports, but not for all the goods. Certain goods. Samara Banda Nikam own a kinnik to own a video to earn in a panic and a bad. Ekata me Raji Ayatana Peto Latino, Anumethin Labagatu. In a me Anumethin Labagatu to Bahandak Arne Hopan any win on me Anumethia, our sh a Bahandia custom secret clear current in this cellar, a Anumethin Labagnathin. Samara Kanumethin, clear current villa will have been a villa Valtino. We have a Matkian monumental and may border regulatory agencies, Semnathan may Anit Raja Ayatana may Yam Yam Sima and Panola Tina, Anumatia do not with the customs clearance Karanapolo. Up in Nikang Balmu may Vagi Ayatan Cochiratino together. May Mamma Listica Kadalatino, border regulatory approval in Ayatana, imports for the Pahala Tino, Pahala and Emmy at the meter at a good. You can see on the right side there are certain border regulatory approvals. Up to eight, and there may be more which may, I may have missed. So there are so many other government agencies, those are responsible to give approvals. Without the approval, customs cannot release the goods, either imports or exports. Now you can just figure out what customs officer will have to do. Custom officer can to the current day. You know, automate current day, silam automation current may submit current document. Submit current document customs ekata digitally submit current you know. automation a paper network digitally electronically made document submit current system mega khadanda you know. ehema submit karapu documents customs officer can digitally ek approve current you know. eka thamai thakade document approval eka digitally can ehema nathan automated care a approval like a dun shipment ticket at the goods behind examine karana the net the key nigger digitally the irony karana electronically the irony karana a theory karala a balan only kill a theory no a examination sent ticket again hilla and ethanol the office again a container a ho a shipment ticket arala balano. Arla balane kana automate karanne be, apita robots la daanne be, or thamai ne ministru, officers la. Egu lo make a balad diha be, ar documents tike them paper form meke ne, digital form meke ne. Enang egu lo te denna na tab beka. E tab beka te ar digital kas dekhe ka digital value declaration ne ka digital invoice ne ka arge na ek ek ka sansan dene karla physically examine karanne be na. That is the full automation. In a bala move, me automation negate the api mono the curl at the may win a quarter. May import process second. Import clearance procedure. Mulima make a mad the ogul and pair of customs again at the inox, Sri Lanka customs. ACCSYSK automated cargo clearance systems. So Sri Lanka customs has an automated cargo clearance systems in the customs headquarters. Computer system make a thing. Make it connect Karanoni Ayatana Kamu Mono other. The Mulim Mangara Kiwagi, other border regulatory agencies, the no. Egulunga may system make it a connect Karana Vinopita. It was an importer's line, no customs house agents line, no Egulu Vinwin, Samara will out a customs house agent, a customs secretary. In an importer's la customs house agents la, up it may system make it a connect Karana Vino. Then Bahanda Anane Karane now Magim, Himanathan Guanyana Magi. In a may now neojitin, one year on neojitin, freight forwarders, kin a may shipping 
ट्रेड के घागो ट्रांसपोर्ट इंडस्ट्री के इन्ना में सीलुमे एंटिटीज हस्तम के रे कनेक्ट कराने वेनो इट पासे में बाहर नहीं वाला गोड़े बाहर ने वाराया वन वाला गुण तोटु पल वाला नहीं ना में वाराया वाल गुण तोटु पल वाल में के रे संबंध कर गाने वेनो मुकद बाहर ने तीन एगोलों में कस्टडी के द गुड्स आई इन द कस्टडी ऑफ पोर्ट ऑपरेटर बट दे कैन नॉट रिलीज द गुड्स अनलेस कस्टम्स गिव्स उंडो डीजीसी के साली मई बैंकों देखे थे बुना इटा इंपोर्टर्स लगे एक्सपोर्टर्स लगे साली थी ये ने वेना बैंकों वाले समारक के लाड अनित बैंक सर एक इंपोर्ट के बैंक का बैंक ऑफ सिलोन हर पीपल्स बैंक में वेना पुलवा अब एकाउंट के इंपोर्ट के एकाउंट का एंड देर आर ऑल टू गिदर टू माय नॉलेज 26 म मैनेज कर लंका එනම් මේක හාඩ් කොපි එකක printed form එකේ කොපිස් 16ක් ගෙනම විස්තර කරලා මේ කොපිස් 16ම අයින් කරලා එක කොපි එකකට ඒක අඩු කරලා අපි කිව්වා මේක electronically custom system එකට දාන්න කියලා දැන් මේ වෙනකොට ඔක්කොම shipping lines වී freight forwarders ලයි මේ custom system එකට connect කරලා සෑම manifest එකක්ම electronically අපිට හම්බ වෙනවා ඊට පස්සේ වෙන්නේ cargo clearance process එක පටන් ගන්නවා खाबो क्लीयरेंस प्रोसेस से का पटांग करने कोटा फालेवेनी में वेन एक्टिविटी के तमाई कस्टम्स डिक्लेरेशन निका खादने का कस्टम्स डिक्लेरेशन निका खादला एक अ कस्टम्स से करे सबमिट करने तो मेक अ पेपर के प्रिंट प्रिंट करला साकास करला पेपर के प्रिंट करला तमाई कस्टम्स से करे सबमिट करो बट इन 2011 वी ऑटोमेटेड तो मैं भी नहीं कोटा कस अपे सिस्टम में कट इन अ कस्टम्स डिक्लेरेशन और कॉमे इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली ऑनलाइन सबमिट करना है ना मैं कस्टम्स डिक्लेरेशन का ऑनलाइन सबमिट करना कस्टम्स आउट सेशन थारी इंपोर्ट आहारी अपे सिस्टम में कर मैं सिस्टम में कर सबमिट कर ला एक एसेस करना कि लापी की ना इन अंक का सेव करना सेव कर कुछ रह टैक्सेस के लिए तो ये देखिए ना एक गणन है दीमा मैं गणन है दला लेकर नया ऐसी करना मैं कस्टम सिस्टम में क्या जेनरेट करना एसेसमेंट नोटिस है का एसेसमेंट नोटिस है का अभी या वो ना ये सबमिट कर बु कस्टम साउस एजेंट आ रही इंपोर्टेड है मैं याना वाट एक कम ओगलो रजिस्टर कर ले दीपुना � දැන් මෙන්න ඕගලොන්ගේ shipment එකට අදාළ cost deck එක assess කරුවා කියලා. ඒ assessment එකෙන් ගෙවන්න ඕනේ tax එක කීයද කියලා ඕගලට inform කරනවා. එහෙනම් ඊළඟට step එක තමයි මේ tax එක ගෙවන එක. එහෙනම් මේ tax එක ගෙවන්න අපි ලංකා ක්‍රියේ එකත් එක්ක එකතු වෙලා online payment mechanism එකක් එහෙම නැත්නම් internet banking පාවිච්චි කරලා online customs duty ගෙවන්න පුළුවන් platform එකක් හදලා තියෙනවා. ඒක එක බැංකු ගණනාවක් මේ වෙනකොට මේ platform එකට සම්බන්ධ වෙලා තියෙනවා. ඔගොල්ලෝගේ accounts A bank වල පවත්වගෙන ගියොත් ඕගොල්ලන්ට පුළුවන් A bank වල e internet payment හරහා A facility එක හරහා customs duty ගෙවන්න. 
දැනටමත් ඉන්නේ එහෙම ෆැසිලිටි එක දෙන්නේ නැති බැංකුවක නම් මම ඕගලන්ට කියනවා ඒ ෆැසිලිටි එක දෙන බැංකුවකට ඉක්මනට ගිහිලා සම්බන්ධ වෙන්න කියලා. එතකොට ඒ ෆැසිලිටි දෙන්නේ නැති බැංකු ඉක්මනට මේ ප්ලැට්ෆෝම් එකට සම්බන්ධ වෙනවා. දැන් මෙහෙම පේමන්ට් එක කරනකොට වෙන්නේ ඕගලන්ගේ අකවුන්ට් එකෙන් ඉම්පෝට් එකේ අකවුන්ට් එකෙන් බැංකු ඔෆ් සිලෝන් එකට සල්ලි එනවා. ඒක සල්ලි හම්බුණා කියලා බැංකු ඔෆ් සිලෝන් එකෙන් කන්ෆර්මේෂන් එකක් දෙනවා. ඒ process එක ඔක්කොම ලංකා ක්ලියර් එක හරහා සිද්ධ වෙනකොට ලංකා ක්ලියර් එක දන්නවා දැන් සල්ලි ටික සෙකියෝ වුණා කියලා ලංකා ක්ලියර් එකෙන් අපේ සිස්ටම් එකට මෙසේජ් එකක් එනවා පේමන්ට් ඉස් සෙකියෝඩ්. සල්ලි ටික DGC ට හම්බුණා. Ladies and gentlemen, දැන් මේ වෙනකොට ඕගලන්ට පේනවා අපේ සිස්ටම් එකේ තියෙනවා තොරතුරු. පළවෙනිටම තියෙනවා cargo information එක තමයි manifest එක තියෙනවා. ඊට පස්සේ customs declaration එක තියෙනවා. ඊට පස්සේ assessment notice එක තියෙනවා. ඊට පස්සේ assessment notice එකේ කියපු amount එක ගෙව්වා කියලා confirmation එකක් අපිට තියෙනවා. එහෙනම් දැන් මෙතනදී තමයි අර document verification process එක පටන් ගන්නේ. මේ document verification process එකත් අපි semi automation එකක් කරලා තියෙනවා. කියන්නේ නිකම් එක පාට verification එක පටන් ගන්නේ නැහැ. ඒකට අපි කියනවා automated risk management කියන එක. automated risk management me automated risk management එක මෙතනින් නම් පටන් ගන්නකොට system එකෙම මේක බෙදනවා කොටස් දෙකකට මේ customs declarations fast track කියලා කොටස් එකකට බෙදනවා standard procedure එහෙම නැත්නම් සාමාන්‍ය ක්‍රියාපටි පාටිය කියලා දෙවි දෙකකට බෙදනවා දැන් මේ fast track එකට අපි තෝරාගත්ත කණ්ඩායමක් ඉන්නවා ඒගොල්ලෝම තෝරාගත්තේ යම් යම් ඒගොල්ලෝගේ කොච්චර නීති ගරුක භාවය ගැන එහෙම සලකලා බලලා විවිධ කරුණු සලකනවා එකක් නීති ගරුක භාවය ඒගොල්ලෝම තෝරගෙන දෙනවා ෆාස්ට් ට්‍රැක් එකට. අපි මේ process එකක් මේ 20 වෙනිදා ඒ කියන්නේ මේ දින කීපයකට ඉස්සෙල්ලා ඒකට අලුත් නව මූණුවරක් දුන්නා. ඒක තමයි ජාත්‍යන්තර එහෙම නැත්නම් ලෝක රේගු සංවිධානයෙන් කියලා තියෙන මේ AEO Authorized Economic Operator. එහෙම නැත්නම් බලා බලාත්මක කළ වාණිජමය ක්‍රියාකරු. ඒ වචන නම් ටිකක් තේරෙන්නේ නැතුව ඇති Authorized Economic Operator කියුවම මුළු ලෝකෙම පිළිගන්න මට තත්ත්වයක් කියනවා ඒක මොකද ජාත්‍යන්තර සංකල්පයක්. ඉතින් දැන් අපි ෆාස්ට් ට්‍රැක් එකේ ඊළඟට දෙන්නේ මේ ඔතරයිස් ඉකනොමික් ඔපරේටර් කියන ප්‍රෝග්‍රෑම් එකට එකතු වෙන කම්පැනිස් වලට අපි ෆාස්ට් ට්‍රැක් ෆැසිලිටි එක ඉදිරියට දෙන්න පටන් ගන්නවා. දැන් මම ෆාස්ට් ට්‍රැක් එකේ දී වෙන ෆැසිලිටි එක තමයි බොහොම කෙටි කාලෙකින් ඩොකියුමන්ට් චෙක් එක කරනවා. 5 මිනිට්ස් ඇතුළට මේ ඩොකියුමන්ට් චෙක් එක කරනවා. ඒ කෙරුවට පස්සේ ඒක සිස්ටම් එකේ ඩොකියුමන්ට් එක validate කරන ඔෆිස් එකෙනෙක් එක ඔෆිස් එකෙනෙක් නේ ඔක්කොම කරන්නේ එතකොට සිස්ටම් එකෙන්ම මේක කොටස් දෙකකට බෙදෙනවා මේ කොටස් දෙක තමයි examination කළ යුතු විදිය එතනදී මේ fast track companies වල customs declaration echo green channel කියලා select වෙනවා නැත්තම් amber channel කියලා select වෙනවා green channel select වුණ වෙලාවට එතනදී cargo examine කරන්නේ නැහැ එහෙනම් ඔයගොල්ලන්ට පේනවා fast track company එකක් වෙලා green uh, green channel වලට ඕගොල්ලන්ගේ shipment එක select වුණොත් customs එකෙන් ඕගොල්ලන්ගේ shipment එක approve කරගන්න approve කරන්න යන්නේ විනාඩි 5කටත් අඩු කාලයක්. එවැනි shipments approve කරනවා customs එකෙන් විනාඩි 5කටත් අඩු කාලයක්. ඒ approval එකත් එක්ක ඕගොල්ලන්ට බඩු ටික අරගෙන deliver කරන්න පුළුවන් import එකේ warehouse එකට. right. දැන් standard procedure එකට ආවොත් standard procedure එකේදී document check එකකින් පස්සේ एक डॉक्यूमेंट का वैलिडेट करना, वैलिडेट करना तो एक कमें एक बेदेना कोटा से देखा कटा एम्बर चैनल एंड रेड चैनल के, एंड रेड चैनल लेके दो गोलों पे ना हंड्रेड परसेंट कागो एक्सामिनेशन, हंड्रेड परसेंट कागो एक्सामिनेशन, तबे एम्बर चैनल लेके दी कागो टेस्ट चेक, इन्हां रैंडम चेक के का पितराय अपे सिस्टम में के मैं सिलेक्ट करना एग्जामिनेशन कराना उन्हें पीली वेल कल कल युतु प्रमाण या कल नौकल युतु द कल युतु ना कुछ चर प्रमाण ये कट कल युतु द तब मैं अप्रूवल ले क सिस्टम में के महामुना ने पास से एग्जामिन कराना वश्य नांग मैं कंटे में कर एग्जामिन कराना हो इम्पोर्टेट डिलीवर कराना टर्मिनल ले क so you have to get it released from the port operator port operator ging make a release karagena green channel lang imported bara denno ne red channel hari amber channel lang examination area ekata geniyannone customs ekata examination yaadde 
එහෙනම් customs එකෙන් මේ operator port operator message එකක් දෙන්න ඕනේ now customs document verification is over we have to examine the container or we have to deliver the container to the importer therefore please release the container please release the container එන මේ message එක අපි electronically තමයි ඒ terminal වලට යවන්නේ ඒ කියන්නේ SLPA SHGT CICT කියන මේ කලබු පෝට් එකේ තියෙන terminal තුනටම e release order එක යවනවා ඒ e release order එක යවනවත් එක්කම දෙවෙනි SMS එක ඔයගලන්ට එනවා එතකොට ඔයගල දන්නවා දැන් මෙන්න පෝට් එකෙන් container එක release වෙන්න අවශ්‍ය approval එක හම්බ වෙලා thereafter the clearing agent will go to the port and at the same time ඔයගල දන්නවා මං කිව්වා නැර approval zone කියලා border regulatory ඉතින් මේ අපි දැන් මේ වෙනකොට ගණනාවක් border regulatory agencies connect කරලා තියෙනවා ඒ කනෙක්ට් කරපු බෝඩර් රෙගියුලේටරි ඒජන්සිස් අපි ඒගොල්ලෝගේ ඉලෙක්ට්‍රොනික් අප්‍රූවල් එක හම්බ වෙනවා ඊට පස්සේ මේ කන්ටේනර් එක මූව් වෙනවා ග්‍රීන් චැනල් ලන් ටෙලිම රිලීස් වෙලා පෝට් එකෙන් ඉම්පෝට් එකේ වෙහවුස් එකට යනවා ෂිප්මන්ට් එක රිලීස් වෙනවා ඇම්බර් චැනල් හරි රෙඩ් චැනල් හරි නම් ඒක හාබර් එකේ ගේට් එක හරහා ගේට් පාස් එකකින් ඉතින් රිලීස් වෙලා examination yard එකට යනවා examination yard එකේදී officers ලා examine කරලා සැහිම එකට පත් වුණා ඒක exit කරලා release කරනවා අන්න ඒ release කරන exit වෙන moment එකේ ඕගොල්ලන්ට SMS alert එකක් එනවා මේක ඉතින් ඉතාමත් වැදගත් මේ SMS alerts ඕගොල්ලෝ දන්නවා එතකොට මොකද වෙන්නේ ඕගොල්ලෝගේ shipment එකට විශේෂයෙන් wharf clerk කෙනෙක් ඕගොල්ලෝ shipment එක බාර දීලා නම් wharf clerk මේක clear කරනවාද නැද්ද කියන තොරතුරු ඔක්කොම ඕගොල්ලන්ට SMS වලින් හම්බ වෙනවා So therefore, please register your mobile number if you are an importer or exporter. Please register your mobile number with customs. So I'll move fast to the export clearance procedure because of the time challenges. Uh, this is these are the entities. Now here I am displaying you a, uh, a, uh, an export of a T shipment. The T shipment ka export karna kora mukadhi bhi nikhe. The method of the ටී ෂිප්මන්ට් එකකදී කස් දෙක එක මුලින්ම දානවා. ඒ කස් දෙක එකත් එක්ක දාන්නුනේ තව එක්ස්ට්‍රා ඩොකියුමන්ට් එකක් තියෙනවා ඊ බ්ලෙන්ඩ් ෂීට් කියලා. මේ බ්ලෙන්ඩ් ෂීට් කියන්නේ මේ ටී වල බ්ලෙන්ඩින් කරලා තියෙන කොහොමද කියලා ඩික්ලයර් කරන ඩොකියුමන්ට් එක. ඒ ඩොකියුමන්ට් එක අවශ්‍ය ඇත්තටම ටී බෝඩ් එකට. දැන් මේ ටී වලට දාන කස් දෙක එක ඇසස් කරන්න බෑ. සේව් කරන්න විතරයි පුළුවන්. සේව් කරුවට පස්සේ ටී බෝඩ් එකට පුළුවන් ඒගොල්ලෝගේ ඔෆිස් එකේ ඉඳලා ආසි කොඩයි කියලා මේක බලන්න. බලලා ඒගොල්ලෝ සෑහිම එකට පත් වෙනවා නම් ඉලෙක්ට්‍රොනිකලි මේ ඇප්‍රූවල් එක දෙන්න පුළුවන්. අන්න ඒ ඇප්‍රූවල් එක දුන්නට පස්සේ තමයි ඇසස්මන්ට් එක කරන්න පුළුවන්. ඇසස්මන්ට් එක කිව්වම ටැක්ස් එක කැල්කියුලේට් වෙනවා. ඉස්සලා කිව්වා වගේම ඉලෙක්ට්‍රොනික් පේමන්ට් කරනවා. අපිට කන්ෆර්මේෂන් එක හම්බ වෙනවා ලංකා ක්ලියර් එකකින්. එහෙනම් දැන් ඊට පස්සේ කාගෝ එක්සමිනේෂන් සෙන්ටර් එකට ගේන්න ඕන. දැන් ඔයගොල්ලන්ට පේනවා ලොකු box එකක් තියෙනවා මෙතන. There's a large box where I have mentioned it as export facilitation center meka thamai me region ekey south asia region ekey thiyena only facility of this nature meka haraha sieluma services 24 by 7 api provide karana so what happens in the system cdn ekak daanawa ekene cargo dispatch note then ha export facilitation center ekata cargo tika gainna lassi vela submit karana ecn kiyana document ekak මේ ECD එක දාලා ඉවර වෙලා කන්ටේනර් එක ඔන්න එවනවා export facilitation center එකට. එතකොට export facilitation center එකේදී මුලින්ම කරන්නේ customs office කෙනෙක් මේ CDN එක acknowledge කරනවා. ඒ CDN එක acknowledge කරනකොට අර මම ඉස්සලා imports වලට කිව්වා වගේ automated risk management එකක් මේ system එකේ ඇතුලේ වෙනවා. එහෙනම් ECDN acknowledgement. ඒක වෙනකොටම අර automated automated risk management එක active වෙලා මේ කොටස් තුනකට මේ කස්ටම්ස් ඩික්ලරේෂන් බෙදෙනවා ග්‍රීන් චැනල් ඇම්බර් චැනල් 100% එක්සමිනේෂන් ද රෙඩ් චැනල් ඉතින් මේ අනුව එක්සමිනේෂන් එක ඒ අවශ්‍ය පරිදි කරලා රිලීස් කරනවා රිලීස් කරලා ඉවර වෙලා ඔන්න මෙසේජ් එකක් යනවා පෝට් එකට මෙන්න අපි දැන් එක්ස්පෝට් එකක් රිලීස් කරුවා එක්ස්පෝට් ෆැසිලිටේෂන් සෙන්ටර් එකේ you can now accept the container you can now accept the ship so that message is electronically sent to the terminal and then thereafter the container moves to the terminal 
and you hand over the container to the terminal operator. And at that point, you get SMS, even what a SMS is. Okay, no. So let me now show you in a summary what are the functions we have automated? Online registration of companies, importers of export, exporters of the online register, online customs declaration is submitted, online submission of cargo manifest, shipping companies, sort of freight forwarding companies, sort of we have provided online submission of cargo manifest, then online payment of taxes, online submission of outward remittance information. That is for the banks, not for the importers and exporters. You can know Golo Sali Avaneva Visser of Coma, customs electronically bank selling upload kernel, online approvals by the other border regulatory agencies. And at the end of this presentation, I'm going to play a video where you can see what are the border regulatory agencies already connected to the ASICUDA systems or our automated system. Then online gate pass printing, then are harboring Elliot and import the gate pass. You can a gate pass, you collect the customs documents and take it in. No, you can do it in the office, you can print the gate pass, you can print the gate pass, you gate pass, you print the gate pass, you can print the gate pass, you can print the gate pass, you can print the digital release order or terminal order, you can release the container. Imported release karana, customs house agent, then the wolf lock to release karana, a message electronically. You know. Automated risk management, Mangari Selaki Wage may cargo examination, current known a Pramani, Sakala Yutu, the net the kin may decision nigga, risk management are automatically gunno. It was a digital documents gunno, I think, digital signature gahara, digital documents gunno. I can a customs declaration in a seal of attached documents are my list up in. It was scan karla, digital signature in sign karla, upload karan. Pulwang, it was a Yaru de Hinatan did us visit your drissel out of the Martuinang api paperless clearance deno. Paperless clearance process of a patagonic. In a make a bellu toggle and a pandilum penne api advance in a very mature Pohoma Parinata Pariganaka Padatiak Mayan water, Sakas Kerla, Stapanikerla. Sri Lanka Customs is one of the oldest government departments in Sri Lanka, established in the year 1806. Over 215 years, it has developed into a full fledged state organization in collecting border taxes and controlling the cross border movement of restricted and prohibited goods covering the entire country. In the technology driven era of the 21st century, Sri Lanka Customs has taken huge steps to provide fully digitalized services to the public. The first step towards the automation process was initiated with the implementation of the ASICUDA system in 1994. The Information and Communication Technology Division of Sri Lanka Customs, comprising of well-qualified IT professionals, is presently managing the Azicuda system running on IBM AIX servers with Oracle Exadata databases and backed by a well-secured disaster recovery site. Over 25 years, Sri Lanka Customs automated cargo clearance system has matured to the highest level by offering paperless clearance with uninterrupted service to the traders and public. The system has expanded itself to offer online registration of all the importers, exporters and customs brokers, an online submission of cargo manifest, customs declarations, and online payment of taxes. The clearance process was improved further by automating the release order to the terminal operators. Several border regulatory agencies, such as Sri Lanka Tea Board, Sri Lanka Standard Institute, Import and Export Control Department, Food Control Unit of the Ministry of Health, Department of Animal Production and Health, National Plant Quarantine Service, Coconut Development Authority, were connected to the Azicuda system to upload the respective approvals digitally. The customs system is fully integrated with the systems maintained by the Inland Revenue Department and the Registrar of Motor Vehicles to share the value-added tax collection data and motor vehicle import data. The customs system also provides periodic reports containing international trade statistics digitally to the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. The selection of shipments for physical inspection and location of inspection was automated using the built-in risk management module of the Azicuda system. The full-fledged modern container scanning center established by Sri Lanka Customs last year was integrated with the Azicuda system to facilitate the clearance without a physical inspection of cargo. 
Even at a time when the COVID pandemic was severely affecting the country, last year Sri Lanka Customs took the biggest stride by launching the paperless clearance process and introducing the digital signature to authenticate the digital documents. Sri Lanka Customs is dedicated to enforcing revenue and social protection laws of the country while facilitating international trade, contributing to the national effort and in due recognition thereof, and becoming the best customs service in South Asia. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think now you have a clear idea of what the automated import export clearance process is. And let's now move on with the other presenters. And thank you very much for your attention. Over to moderator. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sudat Silva, for your elaborate presentation. I think uh, we learned uh, uh, more than the digital signature, the process, and so on. And uh, uh, we can uh, have that put on our Facebook page so that people who have missed it can also follow it up. Thank you very much. Uh, let me introduce our next uh, panelist and the speaker, uh, Mr. Channa De Silva. Uh, he is uh, very well known in the ICT industry. He's a veteran. Channa De Silva took reins in the as general manager, chief executive officer of Lanka Clear in December 2015. He brings with him over 24 years of experience encompassing a spectrum of industries and has served in several multinational and local organizations as well. Mr. Dishila went down in history by becoming the Sri Lanka's first ever webmaster with the development of Sri Lanka's first commercial website, www.lanka.net in 1994. And he was also the engineer responsible for the establishment of the first ever dedicated internet connection in Sri Lanka way back in 1995. Some of the major projects implemented under his leadership include the first online newspaper in South Asia region, Daily News in 1995, first radio station online, TNL Radio in 1996, and first ever Wi-Fi network in the country. He was also a member of the local language work groups of Sri Lanka and contributed immensely towards enabling people to use technology in local languages. He also played a pivotal role in ensuring that a language interface pack was built in Singhala and Tamil for Microsoft Word, Windows, and Microsoft Office in 2007. Prior to joining Lanka Clear, he headed the Sri Lankan and the Maldivian operations of the Singapore-based ICT consultancy Takral One as the senior vice president. He was orchestral in introducing IBM Software Universe to Sri Lanka and developing IBM software business during his tenure as the DGM software group of IBM Sri Lanka. Mr. De Silla also served as a director enterprises business and public sector at Microsoft Sri Lanka where he led the company through an unprecedented growth. His outstanding achievements were acknowledged numerous times by Microsoft where he was singled out for Microsoft Gold Club Excellence Award for exceptional performance the Microsoft Share Fighter Championship for winning against competition. An old boy of Royal College, Mr. Disilla obtained his BSc Honours and MSc in Electrical and Computer Engineering from the State University of New York, USA, specialized in data communication. He holds an MBA from the Postgraduate University of Management, PIM, Sri Lanka, and a distinguished membership at the IEEE USA, Tau Beta Pi USA, and Golden Key USA for academic excellence. Over to you, Mr. Chana De Silva. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nayal. Thank you for the opportunity given. So let me just uh, uh, put my presentation. Is the presentation visible? Is my presentation visible? Yeah. Yes, yes, visible, visible. Okay, right. Thank you. So thank you. So let, let me actually, I think Sudhata did a, a great job in terms of, uh, you know, going through the process of, uh, uh, you know, how, how the customs automated the whole process. 
So, uh, and, you know, let me just sort of dive into uh, the section of what he was actually uh, explaining in terms of the, the paperless process. If the audio Mr. Chandra, we can't hear it. Hold on. Let's hold on. Sorry, let me just play the video again. I think the audio was not clear. For many years, document submitting to Sri Lanka Customs was a manual process. First, the consignee had to hand over the original import documents to the declarant. Declarant also had to collect the necessary documents such as LC, DC, DA, etc. from importer's bank. All those physical documents were then had to be handed over to Sri Lanka Customs physically by the declarant. Customs officials then manually keyed in the customs declaration into the Asikuda system. Upon examining the documents and calculating taxes, Sri Lanka Customs used to issue the assessment notice. This manual system was time-consuming and ineffective. As a solution, Sri Lanka Customs automated the Asikuda system, allowing customers to electronically submit documents. As a result, the declarant can now log into Asikuda system and submit customs declarations along with scanned images of the import documents sent by the importer and the importer's bank. Asikuda system then carries out a self-assessment, calculates the duty payable and issues the assessment notice. Although the current system has made the customs document submission process much efficient and convenient to customers, from a security point of view, the system is not robust. As the system now allows scanned images of import documents to be submitted, importers now sign the documents and forward scanned images of the physical documents themselves. However, they could be electronically altered, which would have security and legal implications for commercial transactions. Thank you. Um, uh, I hope you got an idea what the, the, the process before the paperless uh, uh, process uh, system was introduced. So I'll, I'll so, so sort of start with the Electronic Transaction Act, which gives validity to uh, towards this, uh, what we call the digital signature, right? So it basically covers the filing of any form application or any other document with any government department office, a government department, office, body or agency owned or controlled by the government or a statutory body in a particular manner. So uh, it further says such requirements shall be deemed to have been specified of if such filing, creation, retention, issue, grant, receipt, payment, procurement or transaction, as the case may be, is effected in the form of electronic records as may be specified by the relevant ministry, government department, institution, statutory body or public corporation or other similar body. It also further states the recognition that is given to uh, 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 what we call electronic signatures, where any act or enactment provides that any information or communication shall be authenticated by affixing a signature, such requirement shall be deemed to be satisfied if such information or matter is authenticated by means of an electronic signature. This basically gives validity 
to an electronic signature to be acceptable in a court of law, provided it goes for dispute or any other, other purpose to a court of law. Now, further, Electronic Transactions Act, it, uh, the, uh, certain documents are excluded uh, from uh, you know, giving legal validity uh, of having a digital signature. Uh, there are specific purposes uh, because, for example, a power of attorney, uh, 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 you know, also, uh, you know, trust ordinance, uh, contract for sale of immovable property or any interest of such property, uh, last wills, a bill of exchange, and license uh, for a telecommunication system issued under Section uh, 17 of the Telecommunication Act. So some of these are excluded because in, 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 under the current law, a certain things have to be executed in the presence of an attorney and you know such as uh, you know, a deed a sign of a deed uh, that kind of thing so unless certain uh, document is excluded explicitly under the electronic transactions act it is it is legally valid uh, you know in terms of attaching a digital signature so that is the legal background of a uh, sort of electronic signature under the electronic transactions act Let's go into, so, so now uh, I think the video talked about uh, initially customs had, uh, you know, electronic document, that is, you have a physical document with a physical, you know, what we call a wet signature, and then you take a, a scan of that, or you just simply, uh, you know, attach an image of your, you know, signature, physical signature into a document and submit it, and that that is an electronic document. Right? And when you submit such a uh, document with a signature, whether it's a scan image of your, uh, of your signature or the document itself is a scan image, that is a, uh, that is an electronic document with an electronic signature. Right? But the problem with this is anybody can alter that signature or the document. And the receiver, when the, when the receiver receives this, the such, such a document, Receiver would not know whether this is the original document, whether this is the original signature, or whether uh, there was any alterations done to the, the either the content in the document or the signature. It can be done electronically because, as you know, there's Photoshop and other uh, means of editing documents, uh, including, you know, it can even be somebody else's signature attached as an image. All these things can be sort of manipulated. These electronic documents can easily be manipulated. So when you submit a document, the receiver has no electronic document, such an electronic document, the receiver has no way of knowing whether this is a genuine document or an altered document or even an altered signature. So that is where the digital signature comes in. A dig digital signature has certain features. One is to secure the document in terms of uh, you know, altering the content as well as it also, it, it, uh, it sort of binds a person to that document. I, I will actually cover you know, what, what this actually means. So, so in terms of a digital uh, document with a digital signature, uh, basically provides uh, you know, validity to that document as well as the signature in terms of electronic. Uh, whereas the electro uh, document uh, just with electronic signature only provides intent. It may not provide authentication of that, you know, uh, the, the person who signed it or any, any of that, that nature. So uh, the uh, other purpose of digital signature is to secure a document so that the document cannot be tampered. And even if the document is tampered, the receiver would know. So these are some of the features of uh, uh, you know, the differences between electronic versus a digital signature. In terms of digital signature, uh, it's basically, uh, you know, using technology. Uh, I think uh, uh, Tilak probably will cover some of these things. Uh, it, 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 it basically has the person's digital signature attached to that document. And this uh, digital signature that is given to a person can be used for multiple purposes. For example, you know, uh, in this case, what we're talking about is signing of documents and submitting for electronically for others. Uh, it can also be used for email signing. Uh, you, it can also be provided as mobile certificates so to mobile devices. It can also provide server level where the, the, the document like from a website where you can create uh, different types of documents on a server. 
using some of these digital certificates. Uh, and, and also, uh, in terms of once you attach a digital signature into a document, uh, it, it basically provides certain features such as below. In terms of uh, important features of digital signatures, uh, there are three important features that I want to discuss today. One is authentication. Second one is integrity. And the third one is what we call non-repudiation. So when you say authenticity, authentication, uh, when a person attaches a digital signature into a document, uh, and that, that, that signature binds that person uh, and, uh, and the user to that specific document. And, and, and the signature will show who has sent the document to the receiver. Receiver would know who has sent it, at what time was that signature placed, and who has actually authorized in terms of a certificate service provider uh, who has sort of uh, assigned, uh, assigned this digital signature to that particular user. And, and all that is shown to the receiver. The second one is integrity. That is, for example, when, some, when we are transferring some information, the, uh, there could be certain people in the middle who might have access to that, either the document or that information and, and alter, can alter those. So, so uh, when, when the receiver gets that uh, document, the receiver would not know whether this document was altered or not. But the, the feature of a digital signature basically provides what we call integrity to ensure that the document was not altered. And if by any chance the document was altered before it reaches the receiver, the receiver would know that the document has been altered after the digital signature was put in. I'll show you, uh, you know, how these, these things are checked. And last but not least, what we call non-repudiation. That if I put my digital signature into a document and send it to somebody else, I will not be able to deny that it is not my signature. No, it is not. I'm, I'm not the one who put that signature into the document. So I'm actually bound to that. And I cannot run away saying it's not my signature because this, the feature of this digital signature binds me to that signature that I have put into that document. So, so in coming uh, in terms of, so that is the features of digital signature. So what is the role of a certificate service provider or CSP? Now, the role of a certificate service provider, if I, if I put it simply, is to uh, issue digital certificates to end users, as well as ensure that the, uh, the certificate is given specifically to a particular user who has been authorized with that signature or the certificate, right? So, I mean, simply the role of a certificate provider and analogy I can bring in is, uh, you know, the justice of peace. Now, for example, when you are submitting copies of certain documents, maybe national identity card copy or some other document to certain uh, government bodies, you need to uh, get, a, get a, a stamp and a signature for justice of peace saying that this is the copy of the true, true copy of the original and this was signed in front of me and so on for certain regulatory purposes, right? So what the role of a certificate service provider is to basically validate the authenticity of, of an individual and, and the organization that individual belongs to. And then once that is verified, maybe through checking of business registration, NIC, certain validations, there is an international process of validation. Once that is done, a digital signature is issued to uh, a particular individual. And once the individual uh, puts that signature into an electronic document and sends it to the other party, uh, there is a system at the certificate service provider which actually connects with the document that is sent uh, uh, to the receiver and the receiver can check the validity of the, the document as, the, as well as the signature. So that's the sort of the overall role of a, a certificate service provider. And, and, and Lanka Clear actually launched uh, the first uh, certificate authority uh, called Lanka Sign. Uh, this, uh, this was launched in actually 2009, and this was under the Electronic Transaction Act number 19 of 2016. The purpose of launching this actually was to, uh, uh, you know, digitally sign uh, certain payment uh, transactions that were carried out on behalf of uh, specifically the organization. Now, for example. Uh, payment, uh, there's a payment system called Sri Lanka Interbank Payment System, SLIPS. 
uh, which is basically uh, you know sending bulk payments to uh, individuals now for example most of the salaries including government salaries are sent via slips for example uh, the 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 particular individual may have an account in one bank and the organization that he or she works for will have the, their account in another bank and when the salaries are made the particular organization's bank has to send salaries to different banks of different employees so what it happens is the, that particular organization submits a single file with the banking credentials of all the employees to their their bank and their bank uses the slip system in uh, to send all these payments uh, within the same day to other other banks and the payment gets credited within the same day so for example if you uh, uh, you know make the payment in the morning the receiver gets it in the afternoon but the the issue was this payment system was operated in electronic files and for example the banks didn't want uh, this uh, the person who is actually uh, you know submitting this document to change for example if if it's a salary file you don't either want to add a zero additional zero or deduct a zero or, or make changes to that so what happens is uh, it has to be digitally signed and submitted so that the receiver would know that there was no alteration so this was the purpose actually how central by central bank uh, initiated the setting up of a certificate service provider for this particular function and that's how lanka sign started under the direct guidance and regulation of central bank it is now functions as a commercial certification service provider uh, and uh, in in 2011 there was another initiative uh, by the government Uh, by establishing what we call the national certification authority task force uh, this was actually jointly formed by the central bank and the ict agency uh, to set the overall governance and standard setting for certificate service providers so so they are the ones who actually authorize the certificate service providers who basically function uh, you know provide the csp function so uh, so this this was actually actually the even though lanka sign was set up prior to this this uh, body was actually enacted under a gazette uh, you know and it gave authorization to this uh, task force to sort of uh, set the standards as well as manage the governance structure for certificate service providers uh, and 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 lanka sign in terms of the process is uh, certified by international iso 27001 2013 standard uh, as the first entity in the region and also uh, the the back end environment where the certificates are running uh, you know the certificate pro, uh, you know csp is running uh, it's a, a payment card industry data security standard certified which basically is a stringent international standard where the proper data governance and and security governance is adhered to including uh, accessors uh, security in terms of encryption in terms of cctv access all those things are monitored and audited internationally Uh, uh which is uh, 27 uh, 24 7 365 uh, you know monitored and uh, you know uh, pr uh, primary and data center uh, backup data centers are there and the equipment is using military grade security which the and also i will sort of show the process how it's uh, what the process is followed in terms of issuing a digital certificate uh, and and lanka sign is the only uh, national certificate authority authorized csp and uh, lanka sign is in the current process of going through another international uh, certification called web trust where these uh, digital certificates that are issued currently will be accepted cross border uh, because uh, national certificate authority uh, the back end the root certificate authority for national ca was established in 2020 february and once that is uh, that was established uh, we are going through the what we call the web trust certification hopefully within the next 3 3 months or so we will conclude this and we will align under the national ca with web trust certification and then these certificates can be used for international contract signing and other purposes as well so in brief, briefly uh, about lanka clear this is technically uh, you know a public private partnership where 47% of the shares of the organization is owned by the government in terms of central bank the bank of ceylon and peoples bank and rest of the 53% of the organization is uh, owned by the com all the commercial bank and 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 the, the the entity is governed and regulated completely by central bank and functions under the mandates of central bank uh, and the chairman of the organization is appointed by the governor himself central bank governor himself and two directors uh, represent in the board 
uh, one is from the monetary board and other one is representing central bank and there are two directors permanent directors representing the two, bank, uh, two state banks and other directors are representing commercial bank on a rotational basis so this is basically uh, you know if you look at something like sri lanka telecom uh, a public private partnership where where 47% uh, ownership is within the government so if we look at the the model that is followed uh, which is current model in in green uh, which is basically uh, uh, you know following uh, what we call the iso 27001 2013 standard which is an international standard uh, one is to uh, you know how the certificate issuance process is managed uh, and this this process is administered and monitored by central bank ict agency and sri lanka cert in terms of the governance process and the security process and once the the certificates uh, so uh, and lanka sign in terms of the certificate service provider basically uh, as i said uh, it follows pcidss uh, you know it works in a pcidss environment and with military grade security and these certificates are uh, generated in what we call high security module which is military grade equipment and these certificates are not accessible to humans in between they these certificates are directly written written into if you see the top right hand corner what we call a digital secure token the the high security module itself writes it in the token so there is no human access to this so so once the 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 certificates or digital signatures are written to this token uh, in the process there is no human who access to that until it reaches the end user only the end user will have access to this these uh, tokens and this token is password protected and the password is provided by the end user so so there is no access from for the uh, staff of uh, the certificate service provider to access these certificates it's only the access is provided to the end user so it's actually uh, from from a international governance and security standard perspective it adheres to that process uh, as i said we are in the process of getting web trust certification once we go through the web trust certification these certificates uh, will ac have acceptance cross border uh, and it can be used for international contracts as well so this is the exhaustive process that that is followed in terms of issuing a digital uh, signature to a end user so from a visual perspective this is how a digital signature would look uh, so you can as you can see you can multiple people can sign the same documents uh, i mean i mean i'm just showing two but you can have four or five people signing the same document depending on the 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 process required in the organization so it can appear in multiple forms it can be just the name uh, with the time stamp date stamp and so on uh, which is as the top uh, left hand corner and also it can have an image of your actual uh, signature with the date and name and time stamp in that Uh, or it can also have uh, your physical signature image uh, image of your rubber stamp for example for contract signing you may need a rubber stamp but for some other agreements you may just need the signatures uh, physical signatures uh, and 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 so on so uh, each and uh, so with a single token you can have multiple forms of these signatures which you can use for different purposes uh, another feature of this is this signature has a validity period for example it may be used uh, given for one year two year whatever time frame so once that time frame is over this certificate will expire so for example in order for a sign digital signature to be valid you have to put that signature within the validity period so uh, and and also uh, in terms of uh, so I, i will show you if the signature has expired the receiver can determine whether this, this is a valid signature or not the second one is in terms of the legality of the signature if you sign a document if you put your digital signature today into a document and today the signature is valid and it has not expired that signature is valid even if the certificate expires tomorrow for example let's say in one week the the document will have validity because at the time of you put in the digital signature that signature was valid and not expired but if you put the uh, your uh, if your if your signature expires tomorrow and you put your signature into that document tomorrow that signature is not valid as it is has expired 
so so again uh, you know one year ago somebody signing and uh, signing a document using a digital signature during the validity period will be valid even today right so the validity doesn't go away just because a certificate expires provided that the certificate expired after putting the signature so that's the 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 legality behind that 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 part uh, in terms of when you receive a document uh, so so the other aspect is in order for these features that i discussed earlier to be valid the document has to be sent and received and preserved in electronic form if you take a print out of of a document which has a digital signature it would not have any of these features <coughs> excuse me so once you receive a document electronic document with a digital signature attached to it you can simply click on the digital signature and you would be shown the what's on the right hand side the person who this uh, digital signature belong to maybe the title who who is the certificate authority or the certificate service provider who has issued this and also what is the validity period and all that information can be seen by the receiver so for example if a receiver receives a doc certain document with electronic uh, digital signature and it which is valid only until yesterday and if the signature was put in today the receiver would know that this is not a valid digital signature so all those features are provided to the receiver to validate this and in terms of uh, uh, additionally uh, so for example if by any chance i put my digital signature into a document and send it to somebody and that person modifies the document after getting my signature i have to i put my signature or if if that person alters my signature it can be seen by the receiver for example you would say from uh, if you click on the once you receive a document with a digital signature if you click on the signature panel as it's shown in the right top right hand corner on the left hand side it shows whether all the signatures now here there are four signatures in the example i have taken which are valid now Uh, as you can see signatures uh, one two uh, the first three signatures after them on the left hand side if you see there are miscellaneous changes so which means what has happened is after the first one put the signature and sent to the next next one the next one has put his or her signature into that document so there had been a change that is done to the document which by attaching another signature so that is why it says miscellaneous changes right and after it reaches uh, for example me in this case the last signature there is a feature where i can lock the document once i lock the document the document cannot be altered by anybody else it gets locked technically you cannot alter or modify or do anything so the last person who submits the document has the feature of either locking or unlocking it's just a tick of a button you can lock the document so so in this way even the person receiving it would know this last person has locked the document which means there should not be any alterations after that right so all these things are visible to a receiver you know in the document itself and and what actually happens is once you receive the document it actually checks with the back end certificate service provider whether these certificates are valid and all those things are checked in the back end and this is how these features are provided and these features are not in a electronic signature if you receive a electronic signature which is electronic uh, elect uh, electronic document with electronic signature even if you click on the signature you would not get all these features so these are the uh, features that is provided with a with a digital signature in view of the security vulnerabilities and resultant legal implications sri lanka customs have identified the need for strengthening the security aspects of the current document submission process without compromising on the customer convenience as a solution lanka sign digital signing solution has been proposed for the document submission process to be made seamless importers declarants and bank officials who get involved in the customs clearing process should sign up for lanka sign which is a very simple process of submitting a duly completed application online with no investment other than a nominal fee for the security token and an annual fee once that is done the consignee can digitally sign any electronic document 
scanned copies of the original import documents and the proxy, and sent it to the declarant via email or any electronic document sharing platform that they may use. Importers can also advise its bank to send the digitally signed documents such as LC, DC, DA to the declarant. Upon receiving the above digitally signed documents, the declarants can log into Asikuda system and submit the customs declaration together with the digitally signed copies of all import documents, including the proxy. Asikuda system will then carry out a self-assessment, calculate the duty payable and issue the assessment notice. Customs officials can also check whether the digital signatures are valid and if the documents have been altered after placing the digital signatures. Customers can use the same digital signature for the purpose of signing other import-related documents submitted to Sri Lanka Customs and to sign any electronic document to be forwarded to other parties for any other purpose as well. Lanka Clear is the operator of Lanka Pay, Sri Lanka's national payment network, which has the world-renowned PCI DSS certification and is the first entity to obtain PCI DSS certification in the country. Lanka Sign uses military-grade secure equipment, secure tokens and is also ISO 27001-2013 certified, which is a testament to the security of the entire process. Lanka Sign complies with the Electronic Transaction Act, hence all digitally signed documents using Lanka Sign are accepted in a court of law. Verifying the authenticity of a digitally signed document is a simple process, which even a non-technical person can easily do. It's fast, convenient, cost-effective and secure. In terms of just a, just a uh, number, in terms of uh, the cost actually, uh, you know, uh, I mean, once you obtain a digital certificate, uh, I, uh, it, you can sign uh, documents submitting to customs or any other document. So it, there is no limitation on what number of documents that you can sign. So the basic charge that we do is from the, especially from the private sector, uh, it will cost you, uh, you know, 2000 rupees for a digital certificates annually. It's an annual fee. It's a subscription fee. And you have to get a token, uh, you know, which is the secure token that I, I described, which costs something roughly something about 2500 rupees. Uh, which we actually it doesn't it's not manufactured in Sri Lanka we, we have to import that and and that's a one-time cost uh, actually, uh, but based on special request from uh, ICT agency and, and central bank for government entities we are giving actually uh, way below cost of 500 rupees a year uh, this digital certificate uh, in terms of the adoption we have uh, we have seen uh, you know 45 plus financial institutes are using this uh, at the moment uh, the digital certificates for multiple uh, different payment, uh, you know, uh, integrations, uh, as I said, slips and others. Uh, for customs related, we have already seen more than 350 organizations coming on board and actually day by day, uh, most others are joining. Uh, we have also uh, seen, uh, we work with uh, the, the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce. There were most, more than 150 import export companies are actually submitting documents with Chamber using digital signatures. We have also integrated digital signatures into mobile devices. We are, uh, you know, there are actually mobile payment application where they get uh, certain mandates signed for banks electronically using a mobile device. We have seen more than 700,000 people actually obtaining this uh, across uh, many devices. Uh, and also uh, Columbus Stock Exchange is actually also using for the, through their CDS uh, for document exchange. Uh, many government department, including obviously customs, uh, central bank, Ministry of Justice, BUI, CERT, uh, Sri Lanka, Ceylon Electricity Board, Regulatory Commission, Samurdhi, uh, Petroleum Corporation, Municipal Council, and so many others. So what, what the purpose of this is actually, uh, you know, I think the DG customs was also there. Uh, the Secretary of the President called a meeting of all the government departments and informed them that uh, no point just only automating customs process because the importers and exporters have to deal with many other departments. So they also need to come in and, and uh, they need to also accept digitally signed documents, which you can use the same token and the digital signature for many departments to be submitted. So we are in the process of getting that. So hopefully 
I think the entire process, in addition to automating the document submission, so Asikuda uh, can be automated. Hopefully, uh, most more other most uh, import export control also we are working uh, in that, and Sri Lanka Standards Institute and many others. So I think once we, all these come, we will have the entire chain automated, and including banks. Uh, so so for example, uh, you know, Commercial Bank, I think uh, NDB and few banks are already. In the process, even Bank of Ceylon actually uh, during COVID, uh, we, uh, I mean, our organization, we were able to submit payment requests digitally signed to Bank of Ceylon, which they accepted uh, as a payment request. We, we didn't have to send manually signed payment requests. So, so, so these are, I think, falling into place. Uh, in terms of how you obtain digital signatures, we have created a very simple, simplified, seamless process. Uh, you can actually uh, the, the URL on the right hand side. It, uh, uh, even the application process physically, previously you had to bring that physically, uh, all this document, but now we have provided uh, facility to submit them online and the documents are validated online. And, uh, and, and uh, so uh, document submission validation, there are videos created, how to actually submit document, how to fill the forms and all this, how to install the token. Uh, and, and the security token, once it's issued, will be uh, delivered to you via a courier. Uh, uh, you know, because of the COVID uh, situation, we have also enabled that process. Uh, we are also in the process of getting a mobile uh, uh, for a digital certificate to be issued to certain mobile devices like iPads, uh, which I think it is, which is actually right now in the pilot stage. So hopefully within two to three months, we would be, be able to issue that. Uh, so for the moment, actually you can use this token uh, on, on Windows, whether it's a desktop or a laptop or a Mac. Uh, but in terms of in the future, this should be able to be used once we have the mobile version issued in iPads and others as well. Uh, and uh, the, there's documentation uh, and also videos on how to install uh, and, and also how you check the validity of a digital signature. So all these uh, are in our website and, 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 and we have a 24-7 hotline. Uh, I think customs actually mandated digital signatures in uh, August, if I'm not mistaken, last year. Uh, at the time, there was a large amount of people that came to uh, obtain uh, at one point in the time. Uh, but because of that, there was a bit, a bit of a backlog, but we, now, we have now cleared that backlog. So uh, within, within a few days, we can actually issue digital signatures to whoever intended receivers now. So uh, as you can see, many uh, have adopted, uh, many government departments have adopted digital signatures. All the banks uh, are actually using for different purposes and they are also in the process of accepting digitally signed documents from traders and, and customers. Uh, in addition to banks and finance companies, uh, uh, there are other organizations we are, who are already using, uh, especially the Customs Green Channel and many others uh, uh, already using or in the process of getting these digital signatures issued to them. And that basically uh, is what I wanted to cover. Uh, I'll conclude my presentation. Uh, uh, end of the session, I'll be open, I'll be available for question and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chandler, for that uh, elaborate, elaborate presentation. Uh, let me introduce the, our next uh, uh, speaker, Mr. Tilaka Pragnaratna. Uh, he's uh, with the customs for over 27 years. And now, as deputy director, he has led many major automation projects since 1996. He has sent us a very short profile. Uh, so I, that's the only uh, introduction I can make uh, of him. Over to you, Mr. Pragnaratna. Thank you, moderator. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think uh, uh, Channa um, explained a lot about uh, digital signature. So it makes uh, my uh, job uh, easier. And uh, uh, let me share my screen first. About uh, Hope you can see my uh, screen. Oh. Can see. 
today i am going to talk about uh, using digital signature in customs clearance uh, uh, but i i would like to uh, skip some uh, slides because uh, i don't want to repeat the uh, uh, the theory parts uh, i think uh, channa covered uh, most of them uh, so uh, i would like to uh, explain about the uh, digital signature uh, token uh, and uh, the practical uh, part of uh, this digital signature and how we are going to use in our uh, system as a good system me meka thamai ogolanta hambenne digital signature smart card ekak naththa token ekak kiyala hambenne me wage ekak meke thiyena there are two parts ekak thiyena private key and public key කියලා මේක තමයි මේ අපි theoretically කතා කරන්නේ මේකේ මේ private key කියන එක ඒක password එකකින් protect කරලා තියෙන්නේ ඒක අනිත් අයට ගන්න බැහැ මේ public key කියන එක අපි share කරන එක ඒතර මේ digital signature එකක් එක්ක අපි share කරනවා public key කියන එක මෙන්න මේ technology එක උඩ තමයි මේ අපි අපි sign කරලා ඒකත් එක්ක මේ public key එක යවනවා නැත්නම් public key එක වෙනම දීලා තියෙනවා डॉक्यूमेंटल मेक एंक्रिपन टेक्नजी यूज डॉक्यूमेंट सैन कर प्राक्टिकली कहुमदी यूज करें प्रसन्टेशन मे असिगुडा सिस्टम डिरेक्टली कनेक्टा कंप्यूटर मैं तीन ने एक सेफ नेट ऑथेंटिकेशन क्लाइंट एक विधि टे मगे के इंस्टॉल कर गान ना पुलवांग एक अटा ड्राइवर एक आ देना हो एक एंग आप इटा मैं के इंस्टॉल कर गान ना पुलवांग दें मैं के इंस्टॉल कर गा तेरा पास से मैं डिजिटल सिग्नेचर एक मटा यूज़ करना ना पुलवांग मैं कंप्यूटर है एक निकाम डोंगल लेगा इंस्टॉलूटर मंगे डीएल फाइल लेक मे कंप्यूटर के फोलडर एक दी मम एक पे मेक पुलवाजेंट समार एक्सपोर्टर्स एंड ट्रेडर्स पर एक क्लीयरिंग एजेंट्स फैसिलिटी का रहने दी ना मैं हम ओम अपने सिस्टम में कटा क्लीयरिंग एजेंट्स लगे देता है टेक्निकली साला काम दें इधर मैं क्लीयरिंग एजेंट के निकट डिजिटल सिग्नेचर का गिहिला गाता टा पास से मूली में कराने दी ने मैं डिजिटल सिग्नेचर का मेवा 
यू सेट अप बालांडा पुलवा इतने तीनों ऑप्शन ने का मैं मंदे क्लिक करो ना वहीं तरह पेन वाह मोटर हो मैं तरह अपडेट की लती है ना सेट एड सर्टिफिकेट के लिए काके मैं एड सर्टिफिकेट किया नहीं मैं डिजिटल सर्टिफिकेट टेक गया ना तब मैं कता आगे दें मां मैं एड सर्टिफिकेट के लिए क्लिक कर हाँ मां मटा मैं इनमें आगे मैनेज यूजर सर्टिफिकेट के ला विंडो एक आके ना मैं के तीनों इंपोर्ट के मैं इंपोर्ट के ला क्यों हाँ मां एक अक्लिक कर हाँ मैं इनमें आगे एड सर्टिफिकेट के ला तब डायलॉग बॉक्स एक आके ना मैं के तीनों इंपोर्ट सर्टिफिकेट फ्रॉम की स्टोर के ला देवनी एक तीनों इंपोर्ट सर्टिफिकेट फ्रॉम अ लेकिन मैं की स्टोर के अन्य ताव ताव क्रम में आप आप इतना त्यागन न पुलवां आपे सर्टिफिकेट सी कंप्यूटर के तुले सिक्योर विधि ऐटे एकड़ के ना भी की स्टोर के ला अब ये दम में स्मार्ट कार्ड के अन्य आप इतना गालोगे ना आप इतना आवश्यकता ना कटा आरायन न पुलवा स्मार्ट कार्ड देगा ये स्मार्ट कार्ड देगा � मैं मैं सर्टिफिकेट टेक आप इधर गांडे वैन इंपोर्टर सर्टिफिकेट फ्रॉम स्मार्ट कार्ड के निक सिलेक्ट करो पुहा हम दें पे ना मैंने मैं लाइब्रेरी फाइल लेकर तमाई वैध का मैं सर्टिफिकेट टेक आंध्र गान मैं का मामा स्टोर कर लेते हैं मैं यूज़र्स एचपीपीसी डेस्कटॉप असिकुड़ा वर्ल्ड के न फोल्डर मुकदमा मैं मैं फाइल लेके इन तमाय मैं मैं आटा पुलवांग है ने मैं मैं स्मार्ट कार्ड देकर टेक नहीं ला मैं क्या इनफॉरमेशन्स गान अबे इनफॉरमेशन गान ना क्यों बाटा मैं क्या बालों मुकाद गान नहीं किया ला मैं क्या क्लिक कर हाँ मैं क्या ना डिटेल हो सिलेक्ट डस स्मार्ट कार्ड टोकन दें मैं टोकन ने Sri Lanka customs or any, or the Tanatura assistance print of customs, ID number, details. We have to do testing purposes, data digital signatures, Lanka sign. This is the information. We have to do digital signatures. We have to expire the date. We have to do it not after. एक्सपायरी डेट टेबल थी है ना तब मैं डिजिटल एक तमाह मिस्टर चांना एक्सप्लेन करे मैं के वैल्यूटी पीरियड आती है ना ये क्या ये तो कोटा मैं डिजिटल सिग्नेचर का आरंग दंग ए डिटेल्स टिक में तो नहीं ना मटर दंग मैं के मामा आ मैं के एक्सेस कराने आना कोटा मैं के एक्सेस कराने मगे पासवर्ड देख और ना मैं कर एक्सेस कर ला इनफॉरमेशन से अंदर मैं टोकन ने का किन्हीं ठाम बुना किया ला यार तो मैं का मुकुट कराने वाला मुझे पासवर्ड देगा तेरे गांडो ने दें मैं क्या आरे इनफॉरमेशन से दिए ना मैं मैं के दिए ना मैं का कार्ट अदर दिए ने खावा दवे ना काम पुलवंद ए वैलिडिटी पीरियड � सब्जेक्ट के अंदर तेरे दिए ना श्रीलंका कस्टम्स में कार्ट अंदर में किस यू कर लेते हैं निकले आगे ईमेल एड्रेस इस तरह ऐसा कुछ मैं क्या इंग मैं के मैं आप ही गांडा दान ने मैं के मांग को शेयर करना पार्ट टेक आती है ना मैं के शेयर करना पार्ट टेक का तमाही पब्लिक की है दया टू टू पार्ट्स है ना � मैं प्राइवेट की की ने कहता मैं अभी शेयर कराने दे पब्लिक की की ने कहा शेयर कराने तब मैं मामा यान ने ऐसी कुड़ा सिस्टम में का टेक कर दे मैं के दे अत्तर में टेक्निकली बैन ने मैं टॉक करने के लिए ना पब्लिक की है का मामा शेयर कराने दे आना आह मैं का दें सर्टिफिकेट इस ट्रस्टेड दे मैं मैं का मामा माँ मेरे को अटैच करा तीन दिन माँग पेन्ना ना दें आह एम अटैच करा डर पास से वाला टक हिला बालांडा पुलवा वो आगे आह वो आगे वो वो आगे यूज़र नेम मेरे को टक हिला बालांडा पुलवा अंदर माँगे प्रोफाइल लेके वो ना किने लोग बुना हमें अपडेट किए ने कि ये आगे प्रोफाइल लेके टेंड पुलवा यार टक � एक अ क्लिक कर हाँ मैं आरा सर्टिफिकेट इनफॉरमेशन चिके ना मैं थी 
ये सर्टिफिकेट्स ठीक है माय इधर पेन है हम उड़ा में दें मैं के काउ द थाना तुरंत मुकाद ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने का आईडी नंबर ने का यागी ईमेल एड्रेस मैं उसको में डिटेल्स ठीक है मैं मैं के पहले दिन जो पेन थी है ना ये सर्टिफिकेट ठीक है आशी कुड़ा एक नो बाला करता है तब मैं के भी अतरा अतः क्लीयरिंग एजेंट के असिकुड़ा यूज़ ने एम के अतिक मैप करना ऐसा कोटा आप ही दान ना मैं के तमाय वह वह मनोहरी साइन कर ले वो वह साबित करना कोटा वह आप एक वेरिफाई कराने तमाय आप ही मैं मैं पब्लिक के का यूज़ करा राइट दें मैं के मामा साबित मैं उनाट पास से दें मैं के तमाय वह आट सीएचएच मेरे का सीएचए के नेक्की दिले मैं पार्टी का कलाट पास से मामा बालमु को हम तो सबमिट कराने की है ला इटे सबमिट कराने इससे ला मामा कैमरा थी इंपोर्ट अगेन एक नेता एक्सपोर्ट अगेन एक विधि है इटे को हम तो मेरे डॉक्यूमेंट टेक साइन कराने की ला मेरे का मामा बेन में सीएचए के नेक्की दिले दें आशिकुड़ा एकटर आह ए डॉक्यूमेंट का साइन करने का टा मामा कैमरे गाना डॉक्यूमेंट का पीडीएफ डॉक्यूमेंट का मामा गाना पीडीएफ डॉक्यूमेंट का मैं कहती है ना माय को ओपन करना वा एडोबी रीडे का किंग मैं चांदन ने के स्क्रीनशॉट्स पेन हुआ मामा क्या मतलब ये का पहले दिली वा वो मतलब बैंडी के लापेन ना अंदर दर मैं के मैं तीन ने मगे इन्वाइस है का मैं कहने का सैंपल इन्वाइस है का मामा मैं सैंपल इन्वाइस है के माम प्लेस करना सिग्नेचर का � क्लिक कराने पड़ोगा बटने का क्या क्या क्लिक करा पुहाम कि ना ड्रैग न्यू सिग्नेचर रेक्टैंग रेक्टैंगल के अलां एक अ क्लिक करा हम मटम एक अ अंदिन ने पड़ोगा मटा सिग्नेचर कोतना दान निकल माँग उड़ीम पहले दिल पेन ने दान ना में तो ना सिग्नेचर का दम मैं सिग्नेचर के दान कोटा मटे ये ना मेक साइन कर दें मामा माटा पुलवा मेक अ स्टैंडर्ड टेक्स्ट का क्रिडिट है 